you guys, this is Brittany with the Homestead Trail. As you can see, I have been on eBay, which is a very dangerous place for me. But uh, we decided we are gonna try our hand at hatching out some peacock eggs. Um, with our new incubator, um, I think we're gonna be successful. I would not have tried this with our styrofoam incubators, but they just came, uh, the mail person just delivered it. So we are going to go ahead and open these up and see how they look. And let's get started. How is the weather in all of your places? Uh, here in Indiana, it is actually gonna be up to 78 today. So it is finally feeling like actual spring. Um, our last frost date isn't until May 3rd, but it sure feels springy right now. Oh, we got some foam. That's always good. Wow. Those are some really nice packing and we actually got an extra one. So kudos to the seller. This is really nice uh, packaging. So yeah, we paid for three and we ended up with four. They're bigger than what I thought. Look at that. It's fabulous. These look really good. I am very impressed by the seller. And you kind of have to be careful right now on eBay because a lot of like the sellers in the northern areas, they're doing pre-sales. So you might be thinking you're getting eggs that are going to get shipped within the next week, but it actually won't be for another month or two. But this place, they were down south. so. Awesome, yeah, those look fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and candle them and we'll see how the air cells look. But yeah, these look great. Let's see. Um, I'm candling with a magic fly um, candler. Okay. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see, but we do have a detached air cell. Um, that's expected. You kind of see it wiggling around in there. So we will, um, we're gonna set it upright with the fat end up for the next six hours. And then I will tear off the top of a um, egg carton and I will actually set them upright inside the incubator. Yeah, all of the air cells are gonna be detached. And that's to be expected, I mean, it happens. Post office is not very uh, gentle with things, even though they did mark the box as fragile. I'm not seeing any cracks though, that's good. All right, so these are just gonna sit on this table here until about 6 p.m. tonight when we add them to the incubator along with all of these eggs. Uh, we're getting about five or six goose eggs a week. Um, we've yet to have one hatch though, so fingers crossed. We've got one on lockdown right now, but we will see. Um, this table, you guys, this is such a perfect representation of my life right now because we have all this beautifulness, signs of spring. We've got plants started. We've got tomatoes, flowers, and then it's just a hot mess. Like You can tell I've been potting here and repotting. But yeah, that pretty well sums up my whole life. Like, my house is a mess, but it's so beautiful outside. Okay, so here is our incubator. This is the same incubator that the peacocks are going to go into. Move my thing here. Hi, babies! How many we got? Six so far. Hi! Oh, this guy's pipped on the wrong end. I don't know why they're pipping on the wrong end. Seems like it's always the Barnabellers that do it. And then we've got one goose egg that is on lockdown, but it is not pipped yet. And this go around, we are trying lower humidity on lockdown. So they're at 48% right now, and I've not noticed any issues with shrink wrapping or anything like that. So we might try that because I think the higher humidity um, during lockdown was affecting the other eggs that weren't on lockdown. So we're kind of experimenting with that. We'll see how it goes. And don't mind my markers. This is how we keep everybody straight. Each week has a different color. So this week it was red that's hatching. All right, so I just got off work 
and it is way too nice outside for me to stay inside any longer <laughs> so it's like 78 and it is sunny and gorgeous out so I am going to take advantage of the nice weather and go ahead and poop scoop uh, the horses their sacrifice area they are still staying there like three quarters of the time we are transitioning them over to the pasture you have to do it slowly so they don't colic and founder and all that fun stuff so they're out to pasture right now, so it's a good time for me to go clean everything up. So let's go do it. I shut the gate, and as you can see, Willow thinks it's supper time. The evening is when I usually give them their grain, so they're waiting very impatiently. Go eat some grass. Um, but if any of you have seen our sacrifice area video, um, I said I was gonna do a update video in um, early spring. And I don't know if I'm going to actually do it. This might be my update video. So um, so this is what our sacrifice area looks like. We started putting them out here probably October. And it is now April 8th. So two mares spent the majority of their time out here. Anytime the weather was nice and dry or if it was completely frozen to where their hooves wouldn't jack up the pasture, we would let them have some turnout time out there. So they weren't completely locked up here. But just any time that the weather sucked, they um, were kept out here and so as you can see there's no mud it's not as beautiful as it was <laughs> and there's hay spread out everywhere because our um, our hay nets they got a giant hole in them so it's a total waste of time for us to even try to use them but so we've just been throwing hay out here and as you can see they're spreading out everywhere but yeah, there's no mud. So that was the main goal of the sacrifice area. And as you can see, I need a poop scoop, which is what we're gonna be doing now. But yeah, so this is your springtime update for how the sacrifice area went. Um, we're probably gonna get a little bit extra rock to run down here. Um, this is where we feed them. And this is a high traffic area. So as you can see, the you can't really see the rock now, but it is still solid so we probably need to uh, replenish that in hindsight we probably should have foreseen that happening and went ahead and put a couple extra inches of rock there anyways yeah so that's the sacrifice area let's get to poop scooping All done. That didn't take very long. There's still hay everywhere, but most of it's still good, so I'm gonna leave that. Give them a chance to eat it. Get back up. I cannot believe how nice it is outside. <laughs> oh, it feels so good. I'm gonna give you guys a quick update on Miss Willa Dean, our standard bread. Um, in that first sacrifice area video, um, she was still pretty uh, underweight. So I wanna show you guys how she's doing because she is looking awesome. Yeah, so with the quarantine stuff, we've been just running in and out of our rural king and stuff. So I have not gotten fly spray, but I see now that I need to the next time we go. Didn't think flies would be this bad this early. They're everywhere. Yeah. But yeah, as you can see, you cannot see her ribs anymore. She has really filled in and she is shedding so badly. Mama. Goodbye. Thanks for visiting. out of here they're so annoying they're so rude do selfie say hi <laughs> he's a good girl aren't you he's a good girl not for the farrier but you'll go for me so that's all that matters right that's all that matters you can be mean to everyone else you just gotta be nice to your mom yes I laugh, you guys, but seriously, the last two times the farrier has come, I've had to give him a huge guilt tip 
because she has such a bad attitude with him. She hates the farrier. The frogs are going crazy. Geese are out. Listen, you guys, our last frost date isn't until May. If we get a late frost and all these flowers die, I'm going to be so sad. It's Indiana, man. You never know what to expect. You think spring's here and then it blizzards on us. But this winter's been pretty, uh, pretty mild, so I don't know. We might be in the clear. What do you think, Ducky? Hi, Gooses. What are you doing, Gooses? Yeah, mow that, mow that grass for us. Thank you. Thank you, that's very helpful. Oh. Do you see it? There's a snapping turtle. He's about to come up. Oh, the koi are out though. At least one of them is. See how close we can get. This orange one is like a solid two feet long. Let's see if I can creep up on her. We've got another white one in here and it's just a little bit shorter. Oh, there's the hole. Oh, there's the white one there. It's halfway underneath the algae. Yeah, I feel like the camera does not pick up how ginormous this koi is. I don't know how old she is, but she has been here since we bought the property, which was four years ago. Hi, Koi Koi. <laughs> Bye. There's also a grass carp that's actually bigger than her. I don't see it though, it's kind of creepy. Hi, chickens. These are blue and splash laced red wine dots. Hi! Hi, mister. Oh, that we handsome. We've actually lost three hens in the last couple of weeks, which is such a bummer. Two were to a predator, and one was due to a prolapse, which we lost a duck earlier to a prolapse, too. And that was a huge friggin' bummer. I was so sad. I love my little khaki Campbell. But. So hopefully we don't have any more losses, not the weather has turned, the critters can go eat something else like they're supposed to out in the wild. Don't eat my little chicken friends. Hey guys, you finding bugs? The greenhouse is all set up and ready to go and we are going to be starting seeds here soon, more than what we've already done in the house. But I'm going to wait another week or two before I put anything out there. We have a couple of nights where it's going to get down to like 33 or 31, so that's a little iffy for me. So we're going to hold off on the greenhouse another couple weeks. But check it out, the strawberries ain't wasting any time. They're already coming back. Side note, if anyone was wondering, our greenhouse survived the winter, which our winter was actually really mild. so. We didn't get any crazy snows or anything, so I'm not surprised, it's fine, but still looking pretty good. There's a little bit of discoloration. Looks like that's on the outside. I think a, a good rain will clear off most of that. And a lot of it, I'm sure, is just the pollen from the inside, so I'll hose it off whenever I go to fill up that uh, big water tank. Our goal in the next couple of weeks is to buy a tiller. As you can see, we've been putting little piles of rabbit and horse poop, putting them to work. Let's go see how the bees are doing. We gotta clear this fence row too. That probably would have been a good project for me to do today, but. Check out the bees. I've been feeding them sugar water, but as you can see, they're actually doing really, really well go for a goose egg hunt here real quick. Oh, 
I see a couple. They're so beautiful. They build beautiful giant nests. Good job, Goose. Go ahead and bring these inside. I know. I hear you. You'll make beautiful nests too. Okay, I turned off the grow lights, um, so the pink <laughs> color from them isn't distorting all of our colors. They are, there's the info there. But yeah, we bought them off of Amazon. And I just want to show you how well these plants are doing. Um, everything here we started from seed. And listen, you guys, I do not have a green thumb, okay? Um, if you are like me and you are helpless out in the garden, um, I recommend, I love watching Roots and Refuge Farm. Their YouTube channel is awesome. I love, love, love her. And um, In My Gardener is also very helpful as well. Actually, some of his seeds are what we planted here. But yeah, these are impatience, and you can see I overwatered them, so they're starting to turn a little bit yellow on the inside. But for the most part, they're actually doing really well. Um, and then we've got some snapdragons right here that are a little crowded, but I just repotted them. Some tomatoes. Got some salvia. And my bell peppers are kind of me, but poor germination rate on them, I think. And we've got some super classy uh, sour cream lettuce and uh, chocolate chip cookie lettuce as well. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, these lights have been working really well. Um, so if you are looking for a cheaper grow light that's actually a grow light that's not just you know a shop light, um, I recommend checking um, these guys out. But yeah. Super proud of myself, you guys. I've never had plants that look this good after they started. These guys aren't, uh, they're not stretching at all. And you can see how high we've got them there. So yeah, they're doing pretty good. And it is about six hours after my first video where I checked in on these guys. And we still have six little chickies doing really well. We've got a couple that are making some progress. They're getting there. But I just went to look at this goose egg and look at that. He's pipped since our last video. So that's pretty cool. Um, goose eggs, I guess they could take like up to three days to hatch from pip. So it's going to be a long three days. I'm going to have to sit on my hands to not mess with it. But fingers crossed that this little guy hatches. Oh, day old chicks are so dang cute. Look at them. He's so precious. Cute. I tell you what, you guys, hatching chicken eggs, it just it never gets old. I never get bored with candling. So much fun. And this incubator we have been extremely happy with. Um, still, everything is working perfectly. We've done probably 10 hatches so far. Everything's been awesome. All right, you guys, it's almost feeding time, so I'm gonna wrap up this video. But before I do, I just wanted to show you what we're gonna be doing with the peacock eggs. So I've taken this cardboard egg carton and I ripped the lid off, so it's just the base. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sit it on one of my trays here. And I'm gonna put the peacock eggs in pointy side down, uh, fat side up. And they're gonna stay in there for like three days. I'll candle them at the end of that. And so what that's gonna do is the way that our trays work is it's just gonna slide them back and forth. And it's gonna keep them from getting turned so that they have time for that air cell to restabilize and reattach, hopefully. So that's what I did with some call duck eggs and it worked. So we're gonna do that and we're gonna add those uh, goose and chicken eggs that we've gathered over the past week. Go ahead and put those in for next week's hatch. Um, if any of you are wondering, they say that you're not supposed to open the incubator um, when you're on lockdown or while stuff's pipping. Some people swear that's like the ultimate rule. But some people don't even raise their humidity during a uh, lockdown. So it's kind of one of those things where you ask 20 people, you get 20 different opinions. But in my experience, opening up the incubator a couple of times while stuff is on lockdown, just as long as you're quick and you're concise and you know you don't waste too much time. We've not had any issues with anything getting shrink wrapped. So, um, so we're gonna do that tonight. I'm gonna go feed. Thank you guys so much for watching and for joining me on this little, I guess a vlog, a farm tour vlog for this beautiful day that we've had. Um, I hope you're all staying healthy. I hope the weather is beautiful wherever you are at. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.